Hello everybody, today we are going to be talking about arrays in Java, and specifically we'll just be sticking to one-dimensional arrays. We will look at multi-dimensional arrays uh, in future uh, videos. So let's say we wanted to have a list or sequence of items, or of elements. So let's say we had a bunch of integers, so int i1 is equal to 5. Uh, int i2 is equal to 15. Int i3 is equal to uh, 19. And go on and on. Uh, this, you all, it's easy to see the problem with this. It's very inefficient. The code is just, looks really ugly if you just have a bunch of the same, pretty much same declarations. Um, and what if you don't know how many you want at once? And it, along with that, if we say, okay, I, I just want to get the first element. Well, it's going to be annoying. And what if I want to pass all of these values into somewhere, like into a sorting array or a sorting algorithm? And it'll be super difficult to do that. Um, so the basis for creating some sequence or uh, consecutive sequence or a list of items is an array in programming. Um, and essentially, uh, arrays are just arrays of elements. Uh, it literally lo looks like an array in, in memory it looks like an array. So we just have literal boxes in memory that store these values. So the declaration uh, type is gonna be this. So it's gonna be type um, and then square brackets and the name. That's just the general thing. So now let's look at different ways to do it. So let's say we want an integer array. So int square brackets r one uh, semicolon and then we initialize it so arrays are technically or this object right here that we're creating is a reference type in java it's it's we're creating a reference to an array so in java specifically what happens is uh, we have some r1 value here and this points to some value in memory but what does it point to it points to the first element in the array, just like that. Um, so R1, and then the way to initialize the size is gonna, we're gonna say R1 uh, is equal to new integer, and then we get pass in a size, let's say five. And then we can also say uh, int square brackets R2 is equal to new int six. Uh, so you can do it in one line. Um, you can also say uh, int square brackets r3 is equal to, and then you can just put the values in here immediately. So let's say, let's do 5, 15, 19, 25, negative 6, like that. Let's make this 5 as well. Um, so yeah, these are the uh, references to the first elements of the array. Um, and what you should know uh, right now is that if you initialize it using the new keyword, so the al new allocation keyword, um, all the values are set to their default. So with specifically with primitives, um, the numbers, so double flow integer, they're all going to be zero. Um, for Boolean, it's going to be false or zero. And for character, it's going to be an ASCII zero. So essentially all primitives are initialized to zero or whatever zero means for that type. With reference types, it's just set to null, which is also just zero because null is uh, if a null reference means there's no address, so it's just 0x, zero, 0, 0, whatever. Um, all right, so let's say that we had our array. Let's focus on R3 right now. Uh, let's say we wanted to access this. Um, so we could, uh, let's say we wanted to print out all the elements. So we're going to say, for, we're going to use a for loop here. That's where these for loops come in handy. Um, we did that episode five yeah five episode five with control flow so we're going to say four int i for a counter is equal to zero i is less than now we want to know the size of the array uh, but what if we don't know it what if it's depends on the user input we're going to say r three dot length it's a value that every integer array has and it stores the length now you should know that this length is constant you cannot change how many elements are in this array. You can only modify the values in the array. Uh, if you want to change the length, you have to create a whole new array. Uh, and then we can just say i plus plus. Um, so let's let's do this. So system dot out dot and to access an array, 
uh, we're going to access an element in the array. We're going to start by counting at zero. So if this is our array up here, we're going to start at zero and we're going to count up one, two, three, four. And the way to access it is R1 and then in square brackets I. So system.out.println R3 at I. And let's run this, see how it works. You get 5, 15, 19, 25, negative 6. Now, if we wanted to modify the values, uh, it's just simply we use this here as the left hand uh, as the left hand operator. So R three at I uh, it plus or times equals two. Um, and you can also use a method here instead of printing them out separately. What you can say is, um, well, we'll get to that in a second actually. So let's just modify the values and then we'll also print them out. So 10, 30, 38, 50, negative 12, whatever. Um, okay, so there's also a bunch of uh, um, methods that you can use with arrays. So once again, we'll only be looking at one dimensional arrays right now. Uh, and these array methods are stored in the class arrays. So you have to import this class because it's not implicitly imported like the java.lang package. So this is an import java.util.arrays. So this is in the java.util package. You have to put this at the top of your file. Um, and this package is not implicitly imported, so we have to explicitly do it. So let's say we just want to print all the elements out. We could, what we could say is arrays.toString, pass in the integer array r3. See how this works. And, oh, you have to, I have to print it out. print and we just get it in square brackets. Uh, you can also um, do something arrays.sort. So system.out.println. Uh, we're going to say arrays.toString. And then we're going to call the sort method arrays.sort. And we're going to pass in R3. So we're going to sort the array and then we're going to convert it to a string and print it. So if you're interested, I believe this uses the merge sort, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I'll have to look at the documentation. Um, what is this? Arrays.toString, arrays.sort. Oh, does arrays.sort not... Oh, okay. Sort doesn't actually return anything. So if you want to just sort the array, you you can... Oh, um, um, you can just do, uh, do arrays.sort r3 and it just sorts it automatically and then you can just print out our god voice jesus christ voice cracks sorry i, I uh, had a presentation that i've just been rehearsing so i that's my voice is just dead at this point um yeah so let's sort this and then we print it run it and you get negative 12 10 and it's sorted all right um what about comparison? So let's say we had two arrays. Um, and I'll just do in this for loop here, I'll just say r2 at i is equal to um, r3 at i. So let's say we wanted to compare these two um, arrays, uh, r2 and r3. Um, and they are the same, we have, we have the same values in them because we just put that equality out or we just assigned it there. Um, so let's just see what happens if we say system.out.println um, r2 is equal to r3. Let's see what happens. And we get a false. Now, why would that happen? Uh, they are the same. Well, if you remember, arrays store a reference. So r, r3 has values let's just say one two three four five here and then we set r2 is equal to a new array so we allocate new memory so 0x200 and it points to the same not it doesn't point to the same memory but it points to the same primitive values so 0 1 2 3 4 um, so on and so forth that a different memory slot now, when we use the equality operator, we are testing the reference. So 0x100 is not equal to 0x200. Therefore, the two objects are not equal. If you want to test for 
actual equality in the elements, you, would, you, you need to use an arrays method called arrays.equal. So system.out.println arrays.equals and then um, you say uh, r2 and r3 just like that so now we should get a true false uh... oh because I sorted it that's why okay yeah okay yeah that makes sense okay now we get a true okay yeah um, let me actually just say this you know, yeah, so when you sorted it, you change the values. So yeah, arrays.equals tests the values, whereas the equality operator only tests the references. So that's 1D arrays. In the next video, we will look at multi-dimensional arrays.